Yeah, my name's Anthony Saliba. I studied actuarial studies at UNSW. I was a co-op scholar there um, and I graduated in 2009. I started in a non-traditional field. So I, I started at, at EY in their banking and capital markets team. And I, I suppose that the reasoning there was I wanted to try something a little left field or, or something that wasn't quite tradi your traditional actuarial work. And throughout that I learnt things um, about derivative valuation, risk neutral pricing, stochastic modelling, um, which is quite a, a niche skill set. And based on that, the, the life insurance team at uh, EY actually approached me and asked me to help with an assignment they had, which um, involved pricing a variable annuity product which is effectively a, a life insurance contract but that has some investment elements in it. Um, and so that, that project kind of, um, yeah, w was quite pivotal to my career and, and from there I learned a lot about superannuation and um, retirement income modelling. Um, and I've done a lot of work in that space since and only recently I've moved across to Commonshaw where I am now as a senior actuary. Um, and looking to get some more hands-on experience uh, within an actual uh, yeah, corporate. Yeah, so when I first got exposed to this area, I really liked the idea of applying um, the actuarial skill set to an area that was, I, I suppose, wasn't, wasn't as um, mature as, as, say, life insurance or, or general insurance. Um, and you are making a real difference to people's lives. I mean, ultimately, the, the purpose of superannuation is to provide retirement income um, f for everyone, and, and that's something that appealed to me. Yeah, so there's a whole variety of things that actuaries do. So we can do your traditional pricing and valuation work that is, is, isn't dissimilar from what you'd see in a, a life insurer or, or general insurer. Um, but there are other things like asset liability modelling, um, modelling of custom, customer outcomes, um, particularly looking at retirement income strategies and how that impacts customers. Um, and there are other things like looking at um, policy and, and trying to, to model um, outcomes, say of, say of the age pension changing, what's the impact if there was a certain tweak to a parameter. So yeah, a ho whole variety of things. And then there's also uh, financial advice. Yeah, so at the moment, um, our, I guess you could say our superannuation system is quite mature from an accumulation point of view. So um, compulsory uh, contributions have been around since 1992. Um, so we're at a stage now where we've accumulated some large balances within superannuation. But there's still a lot of focus on that and about generating high returns but there hasn't been much of a focus on um, how we're going to use those balances, how we're going to make sure that we can um, take a lump sum that someone has saved up throughout their working life um, and turn that into a retirement income. That's quite difficult to do because we're not just focusing on a return versus a benchmark. We're saying, all right, well, um, someone who is about to retire, we don't know how long they're going to live for, how are we going to make sure that their retirement is well funded? Um, we also don't know what investment returns are going to do over that period. We're not sure what their liability profile is. We've got health costs coming into it. Um, and then on top of that, you've got the age pension. So in its current state, the age pension is complicated enough as it is, but we're not even sure if it's going to stay in its current state. Um, you've got the aging population, meaning that the age pension is becoming um, quite a burden on the government. So there, there's a good chance that might change going forward. Yeah, so I, I think um, having the actuarial skill set and using that to, uh, I suppose in, yeah, in my previous role I was consulting, so I was able to apply my skill set to solve clients' problems and based on that you get an understanding of what's happening in the industry and then I think it just comes down to interest. So if you are interested in the problems involved and you do have um, some knowledge backing that interest, you can contribute, contribute quite significantly to um, yeah, the, the problems at hand. At the moment, there are several uh, treasury consultations 
uh, that are open and I've been contributing to those um, both in an individual capacity and, and for, for my present company. The advice I would give would be to broaden your skill set as much as possible. Um, actuarial studies, it's a, it's a great, great degree, great place to start, um, but you don't want to be, my advice would be, don't look to specialise too soon, learn as much as you can, um, and the opportunities will present themselves to you. Uh, the more you know, the more opportunities will, will come your way. Um, in particular, I, I feel as though there's, uh, there's going to be a lot of opportunity in the, in the nexus between pure actuarial work and, and IT going forward. I think that's, that's something that's really interesting that's happening at the moment. So, you know, learn a programming language or two. It, it certainly won't hurt and I think it'll really complement your actuarial um, skill set.